Welcome, everybody, to episode 58 of Disney with the Ducks. Tonight, we'll be talking about after-hours events at Disney. So, Ducks After Dark. We've we've talked about this a lot, and now we're finally getting into it. Um, but before we do that, uh, I just wanted to say tonight, I'll be your host, John Crawl, and the, all the other wonderful Duck hosts with me this evening. We've got Jody B. Hi, friends. Lonnie. Hello, everyone. Gene. Hello there. And Kevin. Hey, y'all. All right. So good to see all you guys after uh, after a couple of weeks of not being on the show. So I'm happy to be back and spending some time with all my good friends talking about Disney. All right. Before we get into our discussion about Ducks After Dark, we wanted to talk about spring. Spring's going to be here in a couple of weeks as of when we're recording this in early March. What are you guys looking forward to about spring? Gene, why don't you... Why don't you tell us what you're most looking forward to? Man, I love this time of year. I love, you know, getting uh, the yard all squared away and um, with, you know, with time changing and be able to work out in the yard longer and just planting flowers and making everything look nice. And I love the, you know, the, the grass turning from brown to green. It's just, man, it's, it's just glorious. Glorious. So do you in down there in the South, do you guys actually have like a winter where everything kind of dies off and turns brown? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I mean, it only lasts for like two weeks, but no, it's not two weeks. But. <laughs> so, but you don't have the six inches of snow that I have outside now. No. Okay. Lonnie got snow, but I don't get snow. Did y'all get snow, Kevin? We get snow. Not Did much this year. Though. Yeah, we didn't get any this year. We get we get some every you know every couple of years we get a little bit, but not a lot. All right. So, Gene, uh, if you really like yard work that much, feel free to come up to Detroit and uh, help me take care of mine. Because I like what it looks like afterwards. But I don't like doing it. Some comes I like fresh cut it. grass. Yep, it's there. Oh, it bit. is a good smell, though. Yeah. yeah. And you know what else I like about cutting grass too is when you look at it after a week or so of not being cut and everything's uneven because it grows in different patterns. But then when you go over it, it's just. You see everything mm -hmm. kind of smooth out. Oh yeah. It's beautiful. Hey, one more thing. I, I'm not, I don't mean to break the rules, but you know, we do that. Um, my wife mentioned today that she's got to, you know, get the bird feeder squared away and the, you know, the hummingbird feeder last year we had hummingbirds for the first time. And so in the mornings we would sit outside and just watch hummingbirds come and we've never had them before. And my mother-in-law at her house, you got to dip and dodge and man, they'll, <laughs> you're going to get end up getting impaled by a hummingbird, you know, a little, you know, a dart, but um, we've, we've had two or three last year. And so we're trying to cultivate the pack. You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited about that too. They're fun to see. We have one that goes to a little plant out or bush or something outside of our laundry room window. And I love seeing them just float there. They're mm -hmm. really cool. So that's awesome. All right, Kevin, what are you looking forward to with spring coming? Spring, spring. Spring's my favorite time of year. I love the weather. Um, I love the fall, but spring is, you know, always a special time, especially around Tennessee and Kentucky area. We get the the poles out, get the uh, get some minnows and go down to the down to the lake and to go crappie. Creek. We go crappie fishing. I don't know if y'all know what that means or if that's a foreign word, but um, oh, crappie fishing love is a lot of fun. We um so I used I teach Science Olympiad or coach Science Olympiad and we had fish as our wildlife safari one one year and the kids loved it because crappie is spelled C R A P I E so mm -hmm. they they had a field day pronouncing that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's a lot of fun because you sit out there, you get a little bit of a breeze. The weather's perfect. It's in the you know usually around the seventies, and just sitting out on the lake all day and with nothing else to do, it's just really relaxing and it's a fun time of year. Fish are biting. It's a good day. Do you take your boys fishing with you, Kevin? Yes. They love it. That's awesome. That's really cool. That's yeah, that's the best part is, is taking kids fishing. And I think, you know, a lot of people would learn a lot by doing that. I think it's a, a thing that not a lot of people still do, but, you know, get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Watching a kid catch a fish. It's it's pretty cool. They, they kind of learn how to start with it. And, you know, you turn the fish loose and then you kind of see how they go along their own way and stuff. It's it's fun. We call that sacale in Louisiana because everything's different here. But crappie, we call sacale, sack of milk. Huh. I know, that's weird. Hey, you learn something new every day. Yeah. We're educating our listeners. I don't know here. what they're called, but they're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin yeah. says, I call them lunch. Just yeah. <laughs> them and try them and I don't really care. All right, Lonnie, what are you looking forward to here coming up with the weather breaking? You know, like Gene and like you, John, I, I like to work in my yard. I actually like to go out and, and 
you know, plant flowers and design my beds and change them up every every uh, every year. So I'm looking forward to going out there and kind of making it happen again. Uh, so, but I, I, I can say this, though. I don't like snakes. Uh, <laughs> so the snakes usually come out around spring, too. You know, they out. In fact, I, think I saw a video somebody posted they had snakes out already. So I'm not too happy about that part of the spring. Um, if I could have a spring without snakes, that'd be good. But since I can't, you know, it is what it is. Lonnie, what's your favorite thing to plant? What do you? I was going to ask that. What, too. You, what do you take question. most pride in on what you plant? You know, um, since we moved to Arkansas, hydrangeas. Ah. Because in Louisiana, it usually get too hot for hydrangeas, so I can plant different kinds here. So I've been planting some hydrangeas. Um, also, what I like is agapanthus. They're a little different here than in Louisiana. Louisiana, Gene can tell you, they grow really these big ball of uh, purple flowers. Here, they're not as big, but still. So, um, and then my wife is a big fan of colors. So she'll say, hey, I want some red here, some you know, purple here, some white here. So I kind of, you know, go out and we go to the nursery down the street and pick a bunch of stuff up and have at it. Do you douse them? Do that you grow? You hit do them have what? I'm sorry. Do you hit them hard with the miracle grow or what do you, do you have any secrets there? No, you know, I don't usually use miracle grow. Uh, I usually use a, a some some local things that they would have. Miracle Grow, you know, you hook up to the holes and kind of yeah. spray it and all that kind of stuff. It's, I've just not been a fan of that. Uh, but th there are some other great things that you can get uh, that kind of really help out the flowers around here. So especially, you know, if I want to change the colors of the hydrangeas, but all mines are white. So, you know, I kind of like the white ones. So. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you 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 need to you need to get you some of the Wakandi and black agapanthus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tried to find those in my That's local the store, herb, right? but I, I couldn't find herb. it. Apparently, Killmonger burned them all. That son of a gun! Exactly. Yeah, because I you know look, I was trying to grow them because you know you know you know what they say if you eat this fruit you become the strength the strength of the Black Panther. I want to strike with the Black Panther. I don't know if that's the, what I thought you were going to say, but that works. Who well, you thought I was going to say, Gene? I don't know. This went I'm, down I was a rabbit scared. hole of craziness. Wow. All right. Um, Jody. Like flowers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love flowers. Jody. What about you? Uh, I, I like spring because our neighborhood comes back alive. You know, in the winter, everybody is all hibernating and inside and nobody's out. And then in the springtime, there's kids and bikes and balls and that's, you know, there's just a lot of activity and um, <clears throat> it's just fun to reconnect with people and say hi. And everyone's out on walks. And um, I mean, I bundle up and take the dog for a walk all the time, but a lot of times it's just me with, you know, my winter coat and my gloves and my hood pulled up. So in springtime, it takes twice as long because you catch up with people and say hi. I just like the neighborhood community and seeing everybody. It's like everyone has come out from hibernation and you all get to see each other again. That's awesome, Jody. I'm the same way. I love that we have a, our little subdivision park right across the street from our house. And then our pool uh, is right behind that. So across the street from our house is the complete gathering area for the entire sub. And it's awesome because now there's so many kids and we know all the parents well. So kids go out there and play for a couple hours together. Parents come out and it's almost all every night somebody brings a cooler out there and just starts handing out drinks to everybody. And, you know, it's, it's just a fun, great environment with a lot of, um, a lot of good families that, uh, that, that we like to hang out with. So that's fun. And then like you guys said, the other thing I like to do is it just seeing everything turn green again, because in Michigan yeah. it's everything dies and just gets gray and dark and it's just, it's not great. And then all of a sudden spring hits and all the flowers bloom and, um, just everything, you know, you can start planting your garden, which we love our vegetable garden. We, we probably spend, you know, 10 times what we would just going to the farmer's market to buy those things, but it's the experience of doing it, right? Like yeah. the kids love it yeah. and, and we have fun with it. Um, but then our peonies open. So that's, that's my favorite flower mm. is I love those. They're big and just like white and it's like a big puffy white ball. I just, I don't know. They're my favorite. So I got a question for you, John. Yeah. So I've been on the on the hunt the last two years trying to find peonies. They're very hard to find around Tennessee. Is there a specific time of year that that they really pop out, or is it just kind of regional? 
you're asking a lot of questions that I don't really know because I just know well, eventually one day I go out there. You know. Yeah, I go out there and they're just like open because they start off as these tight little balls. <laughs> <laughs> they start off as these tight little balls and then ants come and actually like kind of eat them. And then that's what opens it up because they eat the uh, the sweet sticky stuff. I mean, that's why you should never plant them near your house. You should always plant them far from your house because the ants are what pollinates them yeah. but They're kevin the if you come back up for flying pig i will i will mm. we'll go to the local nursery there's lots of peonies here so if you decide okay. to come back up again for it we'll you know or we'll meet halfway in lexington and i'll hand off something to you awesome. yeah. the season's different kevin though because you're in region um eight you know as oh. far as the, the okay. zone, i mean zone eight <laughs> so i just made all that up so i don't know <laughs> I want to see these big old flowers uh, that John's talking about because we all know size does matter. Yeah. I guess the ants <laughs> don't eat our balls until later in the year. Yeah. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> Man, why are you making this so difficult for Jeff? So difficult. Man's got, you know, got other things to deal with. Got other things to worry about. Not, not, not editing out your inappropriateness. <laughs> Lonnie. <laughs> what inappropriate? I'm literally the bigger the flower, the better. Yeah. I mean, everybody likes big nature. flowers. You it's know, nature, I yeah. like big flowers and I cannot lie. <laughs> I like big big buds and I cannot lie. There yeah. you go. Yeah. That too. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Okay. Let's <laughs> let's uh whew, I don't even know where we go from here, but let's transition into talking about some of the events that Disney offers. Here's, here's how you transition, John. You talk about mm -hmm. spring and we have more hours in our day. So that gives us more hours in our evening. Matt, there you go. There you go. I can't, nobody can say it better. So we'll, we'll go with that, Jody. Um, yeah. So those extra hours though, mean a lot at Disney, especially when it's a limited capacity event. So a lot of these after hour events, um, they do cost extra money, but when you look at it in terms of value, our family has always found really good value in it as long as these little guys can can stay awake long enough. That's the only problem mm -hmm. for us having such young kids. But um, w have any of you guys been to any of the after hours events? Are you, are you talking about the ones that are typically held at Magic Kingdom Park on Wednesdays and on Epcot's on Mondays or so, some on top of that? Some other ones on top of that. <laughs> yeah, Gene, those ones or um, or any of the, the hard ticketed parties. Oh, okay. Or why are you the in? way you are, Gene? Just why <laughs> are you the way you are? You um, I've been to one. <laughs> one. I've only been which, to one. Which one have you been to, Kevin? So I, I went uh, Marathon Weekend 2022, went to the dessert party in Magic Kingdom for the fireworks. Okay. okay. Was that... I was there with you. You were. It was a blast. I, say, I love those dessert parties. Those things are awesome. Um, the only thing I wish, I wish you did get like some type of access to rides with that. Mm -hmm. um, but it is nice having the view <laughs> and we've been, to, so we've been to the Halloween party. Uh, we've been to Mickey's very merry Christmas party, uh, back in the day. And we've also been to the DVC moonlight magic. And we found, like I said earlier, I mean, if our kids can stay awake, it's amazing because there's not nearly as many people in the park. You get all your snacks included. Um, and you know, just getting on all the rides and having on all the Mickey bars you can eat is pretty amazing. So I've got a question for you veterans. So for these hard ticket events, do you, if you're not an annual pass holder, do you have to have a day pass or an entry to that park for the well, day? That, that is good... my dilemma that I brought up to all of you the other day. So there is one time that you can get into the park without paying extra money for one of these hard ticket events. <clears throat> Well, actually, that's not too, true, too. If you stay at a Disney Deluxe Resort, right, Gene? Mm -hmm. That's right. I was about to say that, but go ahead. Yeah, a Disney Deluxe Resort. You have access to the late magic hours. Gene, do you have any information about those late magic hours? Uh, I have some, I've taken some notes here. Uh, so uh, no, while, while, while Gene does that, I, I can say this. I know you asked this question, John. I went to the Disney After Hours, the Magic Kingdom one which is usually it's from nine to 12. They let you in at seven. So I went in a little bit earlier. So uh, to that. Jody's point, um, and you, Kevin, you asked the question, do you need a, 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 you know, a ticket for the park for that day? You do not. Okay. What I find is though, the park usually empties out, right? So mm -hmm. 
a lot of people won't go to the park that they have an after hours event at because it closes earlier. That's so good... they'll let you in a few hours early. Uh, we were able to ride a bunch of things even before the official park closing at nine when the after hours event started. And then mm. from nine to 12, that's when they roll out to John's point, the popcorn cart, the ice cream cart. Um, awesome. You know, I think I ate maybe 20, 25 Mickey bars. I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm just throwing out there. I mean, cause literally I would come out for a ride and I'll be like, give me a Mickey bar. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, so I think the after hour events, when you think about it, I know you, you can do the math from the price and all that kind of stuff. There's a pass holder discount. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a pass holder, uh, if you are AP, but um, we had a blast because it's, you have access to the rides and then it's the limited amount of people. So we were mm -hmm. able to ride everything in Magic Kingdom we wanted in that time frame. And actually, mm -hmm. by the time it hit 1130, we had 30 minutes left. We, were, we had rode everything. We, had, we even rode um, seven dwarfs like four times. I was like, I'm tired yeah. of the dwarfs. I'm just tired of them. Right. So it's a it's a great event. We all know you're tired of Dopey. <laughs> exactly. You. <laughs> Nice. That's a, really good, right. that's a really good way to look at it because you could, you know, spend a day at the resort and then do after hours, or you could do another yeah. park and do the after hours at the separate park. So, so I, I just want to yeah. put a little asterisk next to this because there, there are two very separate, distinct mm -hmm. things here. So there's the paid after hours event. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you you pay a ticket and you go in after the event and everybody else is gone and you have to just have a ticket for that. There's also the deluxe late magic hours. Mm -hmm. Th that's if you stay at a deluxe resort. That does not cost you any extra money. Mm -hmm. But to Kevin's point, you do have a half a park pass that day. Yeah. Okay. So so if, if my family, if we were staying at our DVC resort, that would be a deluxe resort. Or, mm -hmm. you know, if you were at Grand Flow or Poly or Yacht Club, Beach Club, blah, 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 all the 8,000 deluxe resorts. You have access in the evening to go to various parks and there's a list of them and what days, but you do have to have a park ticket to attend that. Yeah, so too. that's where your math gets a little interesting. That's where you play a little fun Disney math. Like if, does it, if, if I don't have an annual pass and for my children, they don't, does it cost less to add on an extra day of park tickets to go and use the deluxe after hours, which right now Wednesdays are Magic Kingdom and Mondays is Epcot, as Jean had said. Um, or do I pay the money out of pocket to do the special after hours events? Mm. Yeah, what yeah. Are the crowd, what's the crowd difference between the two? That would be my question. It's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, the paid what I've seen probably be yeah. less crowded, right? Yeah, I would think. Yep, that's what that's what we've seen with even just the, the holiday parties and the DVC member event, which that one is kind of unique because it doesn't cost you extra money, but it also is similar to the paid after hours events where they clear out the park and only mm -hmm. DVC members who have a ticket can access the rides. Mm -hmm. so, so well, I've been to I've been at after hours event that's similar to that, but not exactly. So with um when we go to Summit for Cheer, um what they do is everybody who has got a ticket through through Summit has extended the last day. Uh, there they have Magic Kingdoms open to like one in the morning, and um, it's just the cheer athletes and their you know and their families or whoever that have have tickets to that event. And so it's similar. So it's a lot less crowded. Um, it's just those people, um, and and there's a lot of people that don't go. You know, we've been before, but there's the last two times that I've been, we didn't go. We sent my daughter with you know other people, and we went we went just back to the room because it was, you know, because it was like, you know, you know, just tired. Yeah. That's pretty cool. They do that for the cheer group. So yeah. I mean, yeah, that is cool. Awesome. So yeah. I've got a question. So um, that one, Jeans, yours reminded me of one that I've always wanted to do. And I will mm -hmm. do at one point is um, the uh, wine and dine race weekend has a after hours event at Epcot. So I was wondering if it's like, if, if any of y'all been to that, maybe explain what that is and how that works. I I went to that. Um, now, I, I will say it was the very first race that came back after COVID. So I don't know how normal that is compared to prior years for Wine and Dine, um, because it was the very first run Disney race that came back. Uh, that was um, November 2021. So it was still full masks and um, limited capacity and spacing and all that good stuff. Um, 
Tim and I loved it. We had a really good time. It could have been the company that we had. We were hanging out with some really great people. We didn't really, we went on a couple of rides, but really there were, there were, um, that was the year that it was the, the villains theme. So they had a lot mm. of villains out. So we kind of hung out and saw some characters. We were really just hanging out in the American pavilion, chilling out and talking with friends and having a good time. We weren't so busy running around from ride to ride to ride. Um, I mean, we went on a few, but not a lot, but that that's nice because it's included in your race participant uh, package where if you bring it, if you're, you know, if you have a guest with you, a partner, a spouse, whomever, and they don't run, it's a, it's a very small fee for them to get a ticket to go to that event. So we had, we had a great time with it, but food was not included. If I remember correctly, mm -hmm. I think we had to, anything we wanted to buy, we had to buy separately, I think. Yeah. And, and I will say this, I know, um, and Jody mentioned the Matt part of it. Uh, I have a trip coming up and it just so happens we'll be there for the Hollywood Studios after hours event. So you sit here and you think, OK, I have an AP so I can get in the parks. But my wife does not. Should I buy the after hours so that both of us can go to Disney Hollywood Studios and hang out there or we just make a day of it and I buy a one day pass? Well, I decided to, you know what, based on the experience I had with the previous after hours event, you know, and I was kind of going talking about it with Jody. I decided to just, you know what, I'm not going to get a park ticket that day. I'm just going to do the after hours event because we can do everything in the after hours event that we want, including Rise of the Resistance. And it'll be at a shorter wait, if no wait, right? And on top of that, during the day, we can relax. So we did like Sangria University, which, which we have scheduled to do um, during the day we'll relax. And then at seven o'clock, we'll just go into the park and do everything from seven to midnight and be done. That's right. Cool. So, so, you know, it's, um, yeah, you do the math, but then you think about your time. Right. So that's something. Can you put a, yeah. can, you, can you put a price on going during the day and waiting in line? And you know how the struggle is for rise of resistance, or mm -hmm. do you just say, you know what, I'll just wait, go at night. Does it not break at night? Break. It may break at night, but I mean, uh, we'll see. I'll let you know. Yeah. Stay tuned. Batu, I don't know. But Batu looks really good at night. I'm sure. At least yeah, that'd be awesome. it looks awesome. Yeah. Lightsabers and everything. I mean, oh, yeah. going on, you know. Yeah, that Toy would Story be at night is pretty cool. And Toy and, yeah. and Genie or Lonnie, like looking at my notes, not looking at names. You've got a point there when because when you add on Genie Plus and, and individual lightning lanes and all that mm -hmm. stuff, so you take a park ticket, and then you add the twenty something dollars for. Genie Plus, and then the 20 something dollars for an individual lightning lane. Now you may be at a break even or cheaper price than the after hours event, but after hours is limited capacity. I, mm -hmm. I will say though, back to John, to one of your points, you talked about doing some of these events with kids. And we've done some of them with littles before, both the not so scary um, Halloween party and the very merry Christmas party. Um, and we had some success and some failures depending on our kids' ages. And you think like, oh, it'll be great. We're at Disney. They're going to be so excited. But their bedtimes are still their bedtimes. And if they're used to going to bed at 8.30 or 9 o'clock and these parties start at 9 o'clock, <laughs> a lot of times by 11, somebody's having a meltdown and it's not fun. So you've just spent yeah. all this money for them to go to this after hours event. But they're still little. They're still four or five or six or whatever it is. And their bedtime is still their bedtime. And they're just they're just done. So that's the other part of the formula that I think you need to kind of put into all this is are your, are your kids able to hang? Are they night owls? Can you give them enough sugar that they can keep going or are they going to crash no matter what? Um, yeah. And, yeah. And that's the thing, cause these parties, so we've talked a lot about cost uh, like that they do cost money, but when we look at the pricing of them right now, looking at Hollywood studios, which has them going on from January through June of 2023, um, Without a, an AP or a DVC discount, they're around either 145 or 149 per person. Mm -hmm. um, but then when you have those discounts, it's 115 or 119. So um, that's a pretty significant discount too for annual pass and DVC members. But also, that's still a lot of money to lay out. Yeah. Um, and you know what, Lonnie, I, I didn't realize that this date was at Hollywood Studios until we were talking. I'm going to try to get a ticket for me and maybe my oldest kid because um, we're going to be getting to Disney that day. So it would be awesome if we could meet up. And and even if not, I'll just go and ride Slinky Dog 20 times because that Very ride's good. amazing. 
Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. To, to eat away at the cost, like I said, what separates it from some of the other events is the snacks. Set a personal goal. My goal for this <laughs> one is 25 Mickey bars, five uh, boxes of popcorn. Yes, I'm giving popcorn another Ooh. chance. And at least, at least five to 10 Mickey ice cream sandwiches. If I could do that, I think I've eaten my way successfully. And I'm in training for it now, right? I hate yeah. to run, so I'm not training for any races right now, which there I should go. be. But mm-hmm. I am training by eating more ice cream, uh, staying up later. Uh, so set a goal for yourself. I will eat yeah. that ticket price away. That's well, yeah, goal. that's the thing. You, you want to set that PR, right? Yes, um, PR that's what we all and strive food. for. And, and calories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you, Lonnie. I've been staying up late eating ice cream every night, and I really think it's going to pay off uh, here come Sunday. come eight, Sunday, April 2nd, if I can get a ticket to that event. Yeah, that's my goal. Because right now, and that's the thing, too, is is these things sell out. So if you mm-hmm. see a date that you're going and it's available, you have to make that decision pretty early if you want to purchase that or not. Because um, when we're, we just mentioned Hollywood Studios, um, and they're, the dates are out on the Disney website, but there's also after hours events at Epcot, which run from June 1st through August 24th. Um, and the price for those are either 139 or 129. Um, and the discount brings that down to $99 for any evening for, for that one at Epcot. And then That's the other cool. ones at um, Magic Kingdom is the other main park that has them um, from January through the end of March uh, with about half the dates sold out. And those are around 155 or 125 with the discount. Um, and there's also H2O Glow Nights, too, which, of course, I don't have the dates up for. Um, but that one is at uh, one of the water parks. And Typhoon Lagoon, never... is that right? Is it at Typhoon Lagoon? Okay. And that one sounds like it would be awesome. Because part of my worry with going to those is I've got a lot of, like, blonde kids that are very fair-skinned. And being outside in the Florida sun for hours at a water park, um, you know, we're going to deal with some blisters and and some pain so if we could go at night and do that it would be amazing i would love it i could see kevin going to the epcot one and riding guardians over and over and yeah, over sure. again i think, I think, I think that would be no worse not there <laughs> kevin's just vomiting on everyone popcorn you eat it while you're walking in line and then you get on the ride and then you get the popcorn again and it's like you never can stop and they just keep making you eat more popcorn <laughs> so bad yeah they'd have to shut that ride down for about a week I, I do have a question about the typhoon lagoon um h2o glow nights has anyone been to any of the disney water parks Never. Ever. I, don't I, do, not. I don't do water parks. I mean, other no. than running through Blizzard Beach during marathon weekend, that doesn't yeah. count. We've always wanted to go, and it just comes down to, do we really want to pay the extra money and the headache of packing up all of our children with all of their water gear and, you know, somebody's going to forget goggles. There's another $30 at the gift shop at the park. Um, so we just always put it off, but I really do want to go because they look really cool. Yeah, I, I've heard great things about the and, and John, to your point, in, in particular, the evening things, because then you don't have to worry about, you know, about burning so much. And I think those that the price point for those is a little lower. Um, I know they were pushing Typhoon Lagoon a lot when we were at Princess Weekend. They were giving, not giving it away, but they were it was like half off your, um, yeah. and it was so hot yeah. Princess Weekend that that would have been a great, great deal had we not already had our plans put together. But um yeah, one of these days I'm going to make it over there. <laughs> it's a three hour party and it's about $75. So, okay. And then so, you can eat the ice cream and the popcorn in your bathing suits. Yeah. Yes. There you go. That sounds great. Yeah. That's, that's how I get in my, my summer beach uh, body shape anyway, is I eat a lot of ice cream and sit around. It's perfect. Oh, yeah. I think it would make that better as if it was a work party. <laughs> <laughs> And add add in uh, yeah drinks and dinner and everything else too, just to get everybody nice and bloated in their swimsuits. <laughs> that's what I want. Oh man. Um, okay, so one of the things that's cool about the holiday parties that are the hard ticketed events is they have a lot of really cool and rare characters. Um, but you got to really get in line for those early because I don't know if you guys have ever waited for some of those. I mean they. They can get like an hour long for somebody like Jafar or, you know, one of those characters that just really doesn't come out very often. Um, So those lines form quickly and can extend for the entire party. So it's something you've just really got to got to be aware of going in is is what time and where those characters are at. Um, Have you guys 
done character meet and greets at any of these? Lindsay and I waited in line to meet all seven dwarfs at the Mickey's not so scary or very merry. I can't remember. I'd want to say one of those two, all seven, they were there. So that was, I was like, this is totally rare. You never see all seven of them out. Let's, let's go for it. So she and I, she and I went for that, but that was one of those nights that the boys were done. They were exhausted. They went back. So we paid all that money for a hard ticketed event and they, they crashed. Hmm. But yeah, there's some pretty cool characters. Yeah. And it looks like with these, the after hours events this year, they also say that they have uh, characters set up throughout the parks as well. So that's something just to think about because I know a lot of people do like those rare character meet and greets or mm -hmm. getting the, the autograph books or the, the pictures and that type of thing. So that's somewhere where you can really, you know, along with kind of the run Disney races, go to some of these events and you'll see some of those rare characters come out as well. All right. Um, so what else? What else do you guys like about these these parties or what other benefits are there beyond just the wait times and the free snacks? Well, John, I think you you put the you hit the nail on the head when you talked about the Florida sun, right? So I do love the fact that you're going to the park. It just gives it a whole different perspective, right? With the lights and lights on Main Street when you kind of stand up there, Hollywood Studios, it's beautiful at night, right? So uh, not having to deal with that sun that just zaps you. Right. Not having to worry about just running in and rope dropping and trying to get as much stuff as possible before it gets too hot. I think that's the, the thing that appeals to me most about these parties. Um, just the comfort level that you'll have. And, yeah, there's humidity in Florida. I know that. But it's still humidity plus the sun on you is a whole different animal. Yeah. So if you do have some time, you're like, you know what, I prefer to kind of sleep and rest during the day when it's hot. Hang out at the, the pool um, at your resort and then go in late when the sun's going down. Uh, that's, it's, that just makes it for a more enjoyable trip to me. Yeah, no, that's a good point too, Lonnie. But what I end up doing is I want to rope drop and then also <laughs> buy the after hours tickets and, uh, not, not take breaks in the middle there. So yeah, that, and that leads to disaster. Uh, is, that called, is that called going commando in the park? Uh, yeah, I believe it is. Yes. Okay. I do like I, to go I, commando I... with my entire family. Um, it's, it, it's become a family tradition of just going commando uh -huh. um, until someone completely melts down like Joey, like you said. And then we just have to go back to the hotel. And then I'm mad because we spent all of that money just to go back and hang out at our hotel and watch everybody else having fun. So, yeah. <laughs> That's when you say, you know how much this vacation is costing us? Have yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many days daddy has to go to work? So you can come to Disney. And they're like, we, we just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Bunch of ungrateful kids. Yeah. <laughs> Back in my day, we drove to downtown Detroit once a year, and that was our vacation. <laughs> if you can make it out, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Papa called it adventure time, and we would have to find our way home. And we packed hot dog water soup for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, but Lonnie, something you said in there, I think is really cool because you don't get a lot of seeing the parks at night unless you go during the winter, because when the sun sets at nine o'clock, the park's closing at nine, you don't get that good darkness that you can see all the cool stuff in Batu that you were mentioning, Kevin, because the parks look completely different at night than they do during the day. So mm -hmm. that's one thing to me that's amazing is, you know, you go to Pandora at night and they've got all the bioluminescence going, um, stuff like that, that just... It's, it's a completely different experience, and it's really cool that you get to have that for those couple of hours um, at these after-hour events. Fish and chips are hard to eat in the dark, though, I'm just going to tell you. Yeah. But, Gene, if you drip the tartar sauce on you, it's much harder to see when it's dark. There you go. Yeah, so that's, great. that's a great point. As, but, as a man who can't eat anything know. without being stained, yeah. <laughs> but you do that's have to watch point. out, though, because uh, like Houdini said, the freaks do come out at night. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I, I think, Lonnie, that your upcoming plan is about as perfect as you can make it. So you're going to sleep in, not rush around that day, yes. you know, go to Sangria University, maybe hang out before early evening. And, and the big thing with these parties is knowing that the ticketed event starts at X hour, let's just say nine o'clock for, you know, I think that's what most of them, but you can get in two hours before then. So you actually have, even if the party is only a three hour window, if you work it the right way, you're really getting five hours. So, you know, what we were trying to think about is our mornings 
if we go and rope drop, we go for three hours and then we take an afternoon break and we go back for three hours in the evening, that's still six hours. Mm -hmm. And if we do it this way, it's five hours. So really, again, this is where the Disney math comes in. Yep. Um, right. it, it, so Jody, as you're talking about that, I'm looking at for that date that Lonnie's going to be there, that we're going to be there too, looking at pricing and it won't give me the pricing because it's sold out, but you guys have me convinced at spending a significant amount of money uh, <laughs> that night because I'm going to just take all five of the kids and my mother-in-law. So, I mean, that's six of wait, us. Wait, wait, wait. Tickets. It was 109, John, I can tell you. It was 109. So it was really not bad for that, that night. Um, yeah. No, it's not, it's not that bad. I just have so many people. You do have a whole bunch. But you started this conversation, John, with saying... With how terrible You are going are by yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then you're taking your daughter. Now it was your older parents. son. Yeah, and I was at this person. And now and that you're person. taking all of them and... Everybody's going. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But here's my plan. So <laughs> we can get into the Hollywood Studios at 7. So from probably 7 to 9, we don't have to buy a park ticket for that day. So mm -hmm. we True. go in... Take all the kids. They can do whatever rides, have have lines and stuff. And then if they get tired, my mother-in-law can take them back to the hotel. And I can just stay there with the ones who are the real the real fighters of the group that want to stay up all night. And we're going to we're going to attack this park, um, you know, so we're going to really go commando for the rest of the night with me and, and whoever wants to stay. Right. Yeah, and instead of upsetting some of the children by being like, oh, sorry, guys, we're going to the, the amusement park. You guys are going to sit in the hotel room with grandma. Um you know, I think it'll work out Definitely. good this way. So I'm just going to keep refreshing until that date becomes available. Yeah. And, I, and I'll check too for you, John, because I, I like to refresh. But to your point, Jody, John started with just him and then it was two <laughs> and now it's everybody. And now the next stage of this would be John standing in the Polynesian yelling, who's with me? And he's bringing everybody. <laughs> you know, so everybody who, uh, Storm, Storm Hollywood Studios. Streets Mickey, through dates. Mickey bars for everybody. Yes, we'll be the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, amazing how quickly it spirals out of control, though. The Disney I'm just playing devil's like... advocate here. I just want to remind you that from 7 to 9 p.m., all the normal regular park guests will be there, too. They will. So now, actually, that two-hour time frame could be really crowded because the regular day guests are there and, and now the, the special event party guests are there. So you're thinking like, oh, the kids can go just for those first two hours before they crash and we'll get to do all this stuff. But you won't have Genie Plus, so you won't be able to skip the lines because that would be really mm -hmm. silly to buy it just for two hours. Right. And you've already spent that money on all those park tickets. So, you know, you want to you want to think this through, my friend, before you go dropping all that money. You really well, wanna... hey, but it also hold, comes hold, down hold on, to... John, John, hold on. Jody is the angel on your shoulder. Allow me to be the devil on the other side. <laughs> when people, when they have events there, usually during the day, if you look at it historically, and we can pull up the car tracker, a lot of people don't go to the park that day because they want to be there the whole time. So they're right. going to be a slower crowd anyway. So you still could bring the kids and See? do everything. And then... And it boom. might be... It might be really hot that day too, and people will be moving slower or leaving early because it's so miserably hot. Yeah, so. yeah, because hey, it's, it's that, not a dry great. heat. That, that's right. great that no, you said no. that, Lonnie, because Very I was moist ask heat. The question. Um, you guys have a, a little bit more experience than I do, and maybe a little bit more knowledge, not much, but a little bit more. Um, my experience for especially cheer stuff is that like five, six o'clock at night, everything like the wait times go drastically down. I don't know if it's going to be the same with an after hours event, but just I, there's a big lull in the day. And I don't know if that's when people are going home to rest and they come back. I don't typically go at night, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I don't know if it picks back up. So I, I just know that five, six o'clock I've seen a lull and I know it depends on the time of year. I know there's a lot of different factors that go into that, but it's just like Lonnie said, I, and Kevin too, I think there's something to think about. Yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't be paying the extra money for the kids. I'm going to look at that as the fee I have to pay to keep them all happy that they still go. got to go to the event. And hopefully, fingers crossed, um, they pass out, the two little ones pass out. And my mother in law can easily just wheel them back uh, in their double stroller. So you, you just power <laughs> through, man, all day, John. Power <laughs> through, wear them out. Go back to, oh, we're, oh, so it's time to go back to the room. You get them back to the room, they all fall asleep, and you just 
slip out the door slip out the yeah door. well that's a good idea too because we are we are planning to go to the beach over by clearwater that morning um so oh, they'll be exhausted yeah oh yeah, yeah for sure so i can really just make them run up and down out. the beach and, and here's the plan so if you're really gonna to take them all you 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 pack like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and stuff well not sandwiches because that's gluten but whatever you pack for them to eat okay gluten-free bread so they 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 have they have their like you're not going to a meal meal that day and then their dinner that night is nothing but popcorn and ice cream because you know you want to make Perfect. sure that they're getting their 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 dairy and their Starve them all day their, <laughs> their vegetables yeah. Yeah. Make, make, disney pay, make disney pay at night yeah. them eat everything <laughs> and and whole it. part you haven't seen my you children. Take a whole cart. <laughs> yeah, my children may be tiny. They can yeah. crush ice cream like nobody's business. So Dis Disney's gonna they're, they're gonna, gonna lose have to some go. money on that. We need another cart over here. Yeah. So, oh. I have a question for you. I yes, so um when I have done Mick is very merry and not so scary, we, that does not include any snacks at all. You have to buy everything out of pocket. Um I did go one time when it was the the abbreviated version it was the covid time of it wasn't the actual mickey's not so scary it was like i forget what they called it but they had the carts out the ice cream and the popcorn and it also had um soda and beverages was included when you've gone to any of these events is there any beverage included at all or no or was that yes beverages were included as well uh, i avoided them because that was a filler uh, you know, drinking water and stuff would fill me up. So I didn't want that. I wanted all ice cream, all popcorn. But yes, beverages included as well. Okay. And it's not so, just Mickey bars and ice cream either. It's the fruit bars. It's the, you know, the frozen bananas, all of that. All oh, of the that's, that's healthy. That. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. too healthy. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I have I have maybe heard um, from others that they may bring, bring backpacks to, if you're, I don't drink soda. So this would do no, this would not help me at all, but they bring backpacks and get their soda, fill their backpacks with soda because it's <laughs> not old. It's not, it's not a refillable mug or something. And they, mm -hmm. they, they get their money's worth that way as they get their six pack of soda to walk out. How much is soda though? I mean, I have, come on, yeah, we're looking at like five even... bucks a six pack and these yeah, people are going to carry it on their back for hours. It, it doesn't seem, well, it doesn't a seem lot of people go and they, and, and they get it right before it's, it's over. Right, because you, you still can go, and then you get a whole stroller. bunch. And yes, I've saw people walking out with backpacks full, and I mean, like, and I, I don't know how they walk out with all the ice creams while they freeze, you know, melting, but they were walking out with a ton of stuff. I was going back to my hotel. We were leaving the next day, so I didn't take anything with me, besides the one I had in my hand eating, you know. But by that time, I probably was my third one, so my hand was shaking. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> from all the from all the sugar, the sugar rush I had. But uh, yeah, people, you can get as much as you want. You just go tell them what you want. They'll give it to you. There's no limit. There's no tickets or stuff like that. Like at some of the events, when they give you a ticket to pick up something, you just go to the stand and say, "Give me this." You know, and usually you do this. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, that you. really do helps. That. Like, don't don't do that. Cast members <laughs> really appreciate that. Yeah, no. Don't don't do that. Respect the cast members. Uh, you know, but yeah. Oh man. But yeah, th there's, there's a lot of ways you can make this math work out for you where it's, it's an excellent event. If you look at like time in line, number of rides you've gone to and dollars spent and, and do all that analysis, I think you're probably going to see that this is a pretty good value, mm -hmm. especially if you're the type of person that can stay up until one or two in the morning. Um, because these things do go, most of them I think are what, 10 to one, right? Either 10 to one or nine to midnight, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Um, which you know is it's pretty late, especially when uh, when you're getting ready to get out for your early morning run and then rope drop Magic Kingdom the next day. So, is there anything else that you guys want to bring up? Points or anything about these events? I would just say I, I feel like these are a lot more attractive now than they were maybe five years ago or so because of the whole Genie Plus pricing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know that my daughter and I were just down there for Princess. We bought Genie Plus two of the four days. And that, you know, that was only two of us and the pricing, I, I don't know, was $22 a day or something, but that's an additional 44 bucks each day times two, that's $88. You know, that's, that's just two days for just the two of us. And it's very rare that it's just two of us at the park so <laughs> only it's four, or, you know, in John's case, 972. So, that's true. you know, you, that's true. <laughs> 
that's where I think sometimes if you if you like where for example Tim Tim is getting really annoyed with Magic Kingdom now because it's super crowded and the lines are super long mm -hmm. and um, that park was built a long time ago and the capacity <laughs> It, there's just too many people in it. Mm -hmm. So for him, this would be a better experience because he wouldn't be bumping elbows with every single person. Every time you walk around, you'd have a little more breathing room um, and it wouldn't be so, so crowded. So you got, you know, those are things that you have to think about. Do you really want to wait in line an hour and a half for Peter Pan? I, I mean, I don't know. Mm. Time is money, right? Yeah. Yeah, Jody, I, you make a good point, and I will tell you this: we went in July, um, and it was it rained right before we got there, and then of course it started. And there were times during the night, me and my wife, me and my, my daughter was my wife. Me and my daughter would look around, and we saw not a single soul. I mean, at one point, I was like, "Is this is this place still? I mean, are we supposed to still be here?" I mean, it was nobody except the you know the popcorn cart over here we took pictures in front of magic kingdom nobody was around i mean cool. literally you could throw a rock and not hit somebody down main street that's how empty it was because you know wow. the, everybody was just sucked up into different areas um so i mean i even went on like the the little mermaid ride i usually don't go on that one right but it was right there i'm like might as well go in there we've gone on everything else mm -hmm. so uh so for, i think this would actually help tim he would like it better uh, now, maybe it could have been a perfect storm, like you said, because it had rained before and it was, you know, this was Fourth of July week, but still, it was the perfect event for us. Yeah, and I, I, I love them too. Like you said, uh, not waiting in line long, the lower crowds. And for me, honestly, it's, it's the extra time being able to be in the park because I do like to stay up late. And unfortunately, I also like to wake up early. So those don't go together well all the time, but, mm -hmm. um, at Disney, I'm I'm definitely always want to be doing something, and I'm I'm mad if I'm back in my hotel room not doing something. Um, so these kind of events are are right up my alley, um, and I usually force my family to do it, and it it, it turns into a disaster very quickly. But <laughs> I think now with a double stroller and being able to put the the three little ones at least somewhere, either being held or in a stroller, I'll, if it opens up, I'm going to go for it. You guys have really convinced me. Then my job is done. I look forward to holding Crosby. Yeah. He, um, hopefully he does this instead of the, <laughs> like head button. You. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he said, Lonnie, he said he wants to meet you and have you carry him around. What's for about 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll pick nice. him up uh, from Arkansas in, you know, whatever year that 2041. Uh, <laughs> Yes, in your sir. fine car. Yeah. <laughs> I'll teleport him back to Detroit. It's fine. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, okay. So I think we've we've had a pretty good discussion about some of the after hours events and, and what we see as the benefits of them. And really not a lot of cons other than the cost. No, um, that sounds great. Yeah, it's it's a they're fun. Um, and it gives you that kind of old school Disney experience before the you know shoulder to shoulder crowds every day of the year. Um, so that's, it's, it's a good, good event, I think, and a good way for Disney to bring in some additional money and keep the stockholders happy and everything else. Um, but now speaking of late night, we want to get into our Disney with the ducks, uh, quacking up with the ducks segment, which is my personal favorite. And what I've really missed these last few weeks that I haven't been around. So, um, Jody, do you want to kick us off with a, uh, a wonderful joke. Sure. So, you know, St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner and um, I am 0.00001% Irish, but we're going to give this a try anyway. So uh, why did the leprechaun go outside? I don't know. To sit on his patio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh, she's Louise. All right. Lonnie. So, what do you call a factory that makes okay products? Satisfactory. Uh, <laughs> oh. I was going to say, I know I've read that one somewhere. I was trying to think of the answer, but it didn't come to me. That's, that's uh, a good one. Uh, that's a good one I can use at work when I travel to different plants and stuff. This is satisfactory. Yeah. You make okay yeah. products. It's just okay. <laughs> satisfactory. Okay. Kevin, 
what do you got for us tonight? So we're coming up on spring. You know, like we said earlier, it's a really good time of year. I'm so excited for spring that I wet my plants. (laughs) 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 Oh, boy. Mm. All right. Gene, what do you got? Man, I don't have a joke, man. But you guys know I like to dabble, like tinker a little bit, you know. I've invented something. I've invented mind-controlled air freshener. Um, if you think about it, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that one. I'm going to have to use that one. All right. Um, we've gotten a lot of big snowstorms the last couple of weeks here in, in uh, southeast Michigan. So it made me start thinking, where do polar bears keep their money? In, in a mm. snow bank. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was that was a pretty good one, huh? That was. That you was can tell great. from Gene's reaction. Yeah, yeah. Really like that was a pretty good one. I like it. <laughs> okay, um, it's probably safer like to... than a than a Silicon Valley bank right now. So. Oh yeah, Ooh. that 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 bank had a rough forty eight <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but they might freeze your assets though, Lonnie. In the snow bank. <laughs> in the snow bank. <laughs> Good comeback. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit longer. It took me a little longer to think of it than I would have liked, but you know. Still came out. Um, All right. So what we'd like you all to do now is if everyone could just go back to your podcatcher of choice, um, Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, any of those, and give us a five star review. Uh, Not not four because that that's not good. We want five. And if you don't want to give us a five star review, reach out to us and let us know what you think we could do better. Um, You know, if it's just keep Jeff off the show, then you know we'll we'll. Take that under consideration. Um, but please just, yeah, give us those reviews. It helps other people find us and share the show with your friends and relatives. If you like your relatives, maybe actually, maybe if you don't like your relatives, have them listen to us um, and, 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 and see if they can get through it. Yeah. And, and even if you guys, you know, don't want to give us five stars, uh, you know, just get on there, give a review. Uh, let us know where on this podcast Gene hurt you. <laughs> 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 Poor Gene. I know. But also, after you guys give us your five star reviews, come over to Facebook and join the Disney with the Ducks Facebook group. Um, we have a lot of good discussions in there. A lot of people posting pictures from their trips and talking about uh, questions for upcoming trips, things like that. So, good place to get some information, to connect with some other um, people who love Disney, and, you know, just enjoy the place that we all love going for vacation. All right. And with that, then. Um, for everybody tonight, uh, thank you for listening and Quaharini. Peace out. May the force be with you. I tried to start a revolution, but didn't print enough pamphlets, so hardly anybody showed up. Whether I know anything or not, I'm still going to participate. I mean, you know, let's never stop me before. How about now? Now you, now you sound like Barry White, and I'm excited. <laughs> John, the, the goal of this show was not to get you to spend eight kajillion more dollars and do right. it. <laughs> Dude, it worked. You know what? You didn't introduce him, John. That's the problem. If you oh, say yeah. it again, right. we have a special right. guest. Hey, you left me out. Yeah, that's, that's why he's it. mad. We've also got Mini John here, a mini crawl, Crosby. <laughs>